Hi, I'm Tom Turpin, an entomologist at Purdue University. I study insects. <laughs> As a youngster, growing up on a farm, I had an interest in all things living, all creatures, creepy and crawly. Everybody has an interest in insects. Some people are interested in them in a very positive way, they like insects, Aww. and others of them give me a oh yuck. yuck. But either way, they're interested in them, and if you have that sort of interest, then you can attract their attention so that you can teach them more about uh, that particular insect or the role of insects in nature uh, or in fact why this world would be very very different if insects were not present. One of the important roles of insects in nature is that they are food for a lot of animals. There is a creature uh, called the spider that are insect eaters. For example, the Chilean rose tarantula that we have here I was always interested in, in living things uh, and uh, the fascinating life cycles that they exhibited. When I went to high school, I certainly took as many science courses as I could because I found it interesting. And then it was natural for me to go into uh, science when I went off to college. So many of the insects have developed a, what we call protective coloration, which is a way that they can avoid uh, becoming a meal uh, for a predator. For example, are morpho butterflies that are bright colored, are easy to see, but they have a very bad taste. <laughs> My favorite thing about entomology is that, at least the entomology that I do, is I, I work outdoors. And I enjoy problem solving, which is another characteristic of a scientist. You, you identify that Here's an insect that causes problems for farmers by chewing on their corn crops. Can I go out and study that insect and come up with a new way to help avoid that insect uh, causing a problem? One insect that is not protectively colored is the mealworm. The mealworm is the larvae of a beetle called Tenebrio molitor, and they are a very, very good food item. I have an insect predator with me. An insect predator, uh, the little Rhode Island red chicken by the name of Henrietta, and she is going to demonstrate insect predation. And you can see that this is very good for the insect predator, but is not good for the mealworm, which has now become food for our insect predator. The fun part of science is uh, that you get to ask questions and if you like to work crossword puzzles and figure things out, then you're, you, you probably are headed to become a scientist because you look at that and say, why did this happen? And so the fun becomes when you're able to solve that puzzle and say, I now know why this insect does what it does or, or what causes it to, to do that. And I think most scientists work with that in mind is that once I've solved a, a puzzle, once I've solved a problem, and then I've been successful and I look for a new problem to get started again then and that's what really motivates scientists. We're standing in front of a, uh, a simulated uh, bee tree. If you look through the glass you'll actually see the bees that are crawling around but you'll also see that they've constructed comb in the back and in that comb you'll see the little uh, domed cells. Those are young bees that are uh, have completed their immature stage. If you're going to become an entomologist, you first have to, have to become a scientist. And that means you've got to take a lot of math, you've got to take a lot of science, and when you get in high school, you take all the science and math courses that you can, because you're going to have to have that good background, because when you head off to college, you're going to be taking chemistry and physics and biology, which will train you then to be an entomologist.